by no means an expert when it comes to aluminum soffits and aluminum fascia. I would much prefer to deal with wood. That isn't going to stop me from trying and you know it's not my first time working with aluminum soffits or aluminum fascia and you know not even my second or my third. But that being said, it still takes a certain amount of skill and that, just that knack to get things to look absolutely perfect. And admittedly, I'm just not there yet. everybody welcome back to another episode here at the homestead my name is Jeff and this week I want to focus on installing fascia and as I mentioned earlier I am by no means an expert in this but that being said I think there's a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that might be able to help you out if you ever come across this task at your own home whether it be just replacing a piece that is worn out you're building a shed or maybe like me you're deciding to tackle a garage Seriously, don't assume you can cut a straight line, especially over a distance like this, which is five and a half inches. You might be able to do it over the edge, but not down the whole thing. So, grab your speed square and draw a line. That leads me to point number two. Buy a decent set of tin snips. Now, you can buy siding and fascia specific ones. I think they're a lot longer. They make a smoother cut, but I just don't do enough to warrant that. I just have a pair of kind of standard Milwaukee straight cuts, but they're sharp and they don't have a lot of flex like the cheaper ones do. That will make for much more accurate cuts. That was a very awkward way to do that, but you get what I mean. That brings me to our third step, which is thinking about your order of operations, and more specifically, how water is going to flow. Because at the end of the day, the whole point of fascia is not just to cover up that wood board underneath, but it's to actually keep water out of the structure itself. So you'll notice I'm just prepping this piece behind me, and I'll show you why I'm going to be doing this one first on the back side of the garage with one that's already complete. So if we take a look here at one of the bird boxes that's a little bit further, we haven't done the gable piece of fascia yet because that is the absolute last piece we'll put on, but we've put the initial piece of fascia here that wraps all the way around my corner, and then we've put this little flashing piece that's going to cover that extra piece in this bird box that the normal piece of fascia isn't tall enough to reach. corners the other bird box on this garage that I need about 23 inches of flashing in order to wrap it around enough that when I do my gable it'll cover the end of it now if you're thinking I just freehanded this after lecturing about not freehanding I didn't I don't know if you can see it on there but there's these little raised dimples on the front of the fascia and I was just following one of those lines all the way down. So we're on to the last piece of this fascia on the bird box. I can't get you quite far enough away but this is the one we're going to be installing. And it's going to go all the way down the bird box to the end and terminate where the eaves trough will end on this side. So you'll also notice that this piece, if water hits it, it'll drain onto that second piece we installed, drain onto that initial piece of fascia, and then drain off. 
That's really important on a side like this where we have no eaves trough to collect that water and it just needs to get away from the structure itself. Like these nails. <laughs> the nails or the nails? I don't know, but they bend so easy. <laughs> this is how I've gone through like 25 of them. I find any time you're going through more than one piece of fascia, they uh, they just bend. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so our bird boxes are finished off and we got a little more fascia to go on this garage, but we're not going to drag you along for the ride because basically we're just repeating what we've done already. But a quick recap of what we've talked about today. Use a pencil line to give yourself straight lines. Use that speed square of yours. You're not going to cut straight lines no matter how good you think you are. Second, get yourself a good set of tin snips. They will make your life a whole lot easier. It doesn't need to be the ones made for fascia and trim, just a standard pair of tin snips that don't have a bunch of play in the head will be fine. And third, think about how water is going to move when it hits your garage, your shed, your playhouse for the kids, your house, whatever it may be. And make sure you have the proper overlap to move that water away from your structure. On that note, thanks a ton for watching. That brings this episode to an end, and we'll see you guys in the next one.